Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 25 of the platform specific series of my 68,000 assembly programming tutorials. We've got a big topic today. We're going to be looking at hardware sprites on the Neo Geo. Now we're going to be looking at hardware sprites on all of the other systems in my 68,000 series as well, the ones that have them at least. But with the Neo Geo they're quite considerably different. The reason for that is that most systems have a bitmap layer and a sprite layer or a tile layer and a sprite layer. The Neo Geo has no bitmap layer and it has no real tile layer, it just has the fixed layer. The sprites are actually so powerful, they can actually do all of the functions that the tile layer would do on another system. They can also be scaled, so the um, Neo Geo has some of the capabilities of a system like the Super Nintendo's Mode 7. So they're very powerful and that means they're a little bit complex unfortunately. So we're going to go over a few simple examples. We're going to look at just creating a 16 by 16 sprite and then we're going to look at a more complex sprite because the Neo Geo is capable of chaining sprites together and having sprites that contain multiple tiles to make them much bigger. Now as I say, a basic sprite on the Neo Geo is 16 by 16 however that's just a single tile. Now one hardware sprite, as the system refers to it, can actually contain up to 32 vertical tiles. And if you think about the way the hardware works with these systems that can move sprites around to increase the hardware limit of the sprites, I don't think it matters to the hardware too much how tall a sprite is, it's more how wide a sprite is. And I think that's the reason why the Neo Geo is limited to 16 pixels wide, but can have sprites the entire height of the screen and even beyond the height of the screen. Now, I said they're 16 pixels wide, and that's technically true. Uh, the, the, the sprite is 16 wide but can be many tiles tall however we can actually use two sprites together chain them together and the second sprite will stick to the first one uh, adopting its equivalent x and y position and then we can actually move them around as a single object and so even though the sprites are limited to 16 pixels wide they're actually effectively not because we can use two sprites together to make a 32 pixel wide sprite and that's exactly what we're going to do today and we're going to look at scaling it because as I say it's got some seriously powerful scaling capabilities on these sprites and it's hardware scaling of course. Okay, so lots we're going to have to discuss there. So it's going to get a little bit confusing but we'll do our best. Now the first rather confusing thing about the layout of the sprites is the actual memory format of them. They're stored in bit planes. We've kind of discussed bit planes before but effectively all of the bit zeros are in one byte, all of the bit ones are in one byte and so on. So they use four bits per pixel, 16 colors. Of course that's just 16 colors per 16 by 16 square. So if you've got a huge sprite it can use far more than just 16 colors and to be honest 16 colors in a 16 by 16 pixel square is pretty um, generous so I don't think we're really going to suffer too much there. Now as I say though the format's a little bit odd. So we've got the bit planes but then the data is actually split up into an odd format. So if you think of this as being a 16 by 16 sprite here, then the lines in the data files are actually stored in a, this format. So this line on the right hand side would be first, then this one, then this one going all the way down the right hand side of the sprite and then going down the left hand side. Now that's the format of the 16 by 16 tile. If our sprite was 16 by 32, then we would go here to here and then we would start the next 16 here to here. So it's a very confusing format. Now this is just a line and the order of the lines within the file but the actual bit data of that line is split out again. So um, the four bits per pixel we store all the bit zeros of the eight pixel line together so bit plane zero of line zero would be first in a file called ROM C1 and then bit plane one would be next of line zero in ROM C1. We then jump to a second ROM file called ROM C2, where bit planes two and three are for line zero. And then we start again with bit plane zero of line one. So this line here is made up of this data here and this data here. And line one is made up of this data here and this data here. So you can see it gets quite confusing. So the tiles in total are 128 bytes. They're split into two ROM files, so effectively 63 bytes per ROM file. And so the last line, this one just here, is at the end of the tile data, here and here. Very confusing, you know, I mean, it works, but it's a bit strange. Now, if you're looking to create sprites in the correct format for the Neo Geo, 
my AccuSprite editor can do this for you. Hopefully it can help you out. So if you go to the 68,000 option here and you go to Neo Geo, we've got save sprites and I'm even working on a load sprite option that can load in ROM files that already exist. So if you're looking to hack some Neo Geo ROMs and try and steal the sprites, maybe you can. Anyway, the save sprite option will work with larger sprites than just 16 by 16. And we're going to be seeing that today with this character here. This is one of my Chibi Alien characters. So we're going to be exporting that and we're going to try and show it on the screen because of course it's 32 by 64 here. So it's actually split into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sprites. And it's split in that order because we go vertically and then we go horizontally because as I said, each sprite is only 16 wide, but it can be many tiles tall. So that's the format we want to export in so that we can easily work with those sprites in our actual code. And then I've got some other stuff for later lessons as well. So uh, that's what we're going to be working with today. We're going to try and get that onto the screen and we're going to see the results. OK, so that's how we can actually make ourselves uh, some binary data. But unfortunately, that's not even enough to get MAME to be happy with our data. Let's have a look. So the way the Neo Geo works with MAME, which is the emulator I use, is we need to have this XML file which tells the system how the files actually build together into a working arcade system effectively. So um, the sprite data, as we're looking at today, is defined by this sprite section here. And we've got a size just here, and you can see we've got some ROM files. So effectively, we're defining these files to be loaded in here. We're defining them with sizes and an offset. And then we are actually working with four files in two chunks. Now, these first two here are actually the Neo Geo's internal ones used by the firmware. When the system starts up and you've got that nice Neo Geo logo, um, that's actually sprite data. So if you mess with these files, that won't show up right. It'll come up all corrupted and garbled. So what I've done is I've put those in and left them well alone. And then I've created my own offset just a bit further on. So this sprite C1 and C2 are the resulting export of the data we've seen today. Now, there's something quite important. We've got a CRC and a SHA here. These are, these are cyclic redundancy checks. They're checks, there's no corruption in the file. If these are wrong, then MAME will work just fine, but it will complain at you. It will say, oi, oi, there's something wrong. So um, I've got a little program that can correct these if you use my development tools and hopefully that will sort things out for you. But if you don't then, and they're wrong, that's not a problem. What is a big problem is the size. If the size is wrong, then MAME will crash. So you don't want MAME to crash. So um, what, what I did with my AccuSprite editor is if you go to the file formats page, which is a new page, you've got this sprite save fixed file size for the Neo Geo. And this is actually padding the file to this size so that we don't need to keep messing with this file just here. We can just make it a nice even size because we're probably not too worried about actual space being wasted. OK, so that's how we get some data created and that's how we actually create an XML that will actually work OK. So when it comes to actually defining a sprite, we've got a lot of attributes. Now, before we go into any more, let's actually see the code working because I've been talking quite a while here and maybe you're thinking, you know, I can't actually deliver the goods here. We want to see some sprites. So, OK, well, we'll actually fire up the code here. For some reason, MAME has decided to load on my other screen there. So if we just speed this up, that's there we go. So these are two hardware sprites here. This is done with the tile, the um, fixed layer, sorry. And this is a hardware sprite here combined. Remember, this is 32 by 64. And this is the same sprite scaled down to about 50% size. Now, one thing you'll notice is the text goes over the top of this character's head. Now, that's because the text fixed layer is above the sprites. You may think, I want it below. I can't, I can't need, I need it below. Well, you can't do it. The, the fixed layer is only at the top of the stack. Now, if you want to have text below a sprite in the background, what you actually need to do is do that with sprites as well. When you see scrolling backgrounds on the Neo Geo, what you're actually seeing is a huge grid of sprites that are scrolling. So if you want to have text in the background, you're going to have to create sprites that are your font and then draw those sprites to the screen and remember their locations for clearing the screen and what have you. So that's why we're using the fixed layer. But as I say, the limitation is it's going to be at the top because it's designed for credits, messages and things like that. So, OK, so we've got a couple of sprites here. And now I'm getting a message that says the hash has changed because every time it does, every time I run the program, it recalculates all of the CRCs. 
Okay, so we've actually seen we can draw some sprites. Let's go into the details of what it took to get them working. Now, as I say, each sprite as the system recognizes it is always 16 pixels wide, but it can be multiple tiles tall. So parts of the information, the exposition of the sprite, are just stored once per sprite, and parts of the information, the tile numbers and the palettes basically, will have multiple entries, 32 entries per sprite. So we need to understand that these two separate parts exist and they're stored in two separate locations in the video memory in the VRAM. So the first thing we're going to look at is the tiles. And so there's a total of 64 bytes of these per sprites. And so if you were looking at sprite one, these would be on the even address boundaries and there would be two bytes and they would both be the tile number here. So a HL pair there. Now, as well as that, there's an extra byte and that would be the palette. These are on the odd addresses and the top byte is the palette. The bottom byte has some extra bits for the tile number and also some animation options because they can automatically animate sprites and also for vertical and horizontal flipping. So we've got a lot of options there. And as I said before, these come in pairs per tile and there's 32 of these per sprite. So we're going to want to set those together. And as well as those options that exist per tile, we have some options that just exist per sprite. These are at different memory addresses. These are at 8,000 onwards and the, there are various ones per sprite. So at, for sprite one, the shrink would be at eight, hexadecimal 8,000 and the shrink has four bits in the top byte for the horizontal shrink that's across the screen and there are eight bits for the vertical shrink. So we can shrink vertically in a more smooth way than horizontally. Now the next option is the Y position at hexadecimal 8201 for tile 1. These are all consecutive, so 8202 for tile 2 and so on. We've got some code to calculate this though. So the Y position is in the top 9 bits here and then there is a chain bit here. If we enable this then the current sprite will take on the X and Y position of the last sprite and it, they will become connected and we'll see that later. Now the remaining bits are the height of the sprite. Now these are a bit tricky. When you change these and you also use scaling, you're actually changing the window that the sprite is shown in. So if you say the sprite is four tiles tall and then you scale those four tiles by 50%, then half of the shown area will be kind of corruption. So um, don't be surprised by that. Now, if you're just starting out with this, I would suggest you just start with unscaled sprites, but that's just something you might get confused by if you have a look at it. And there is a far better website that's got some visual demonstrations of this kind of thing. There's a Neo Geo development wiki, which has got some examples of how this works that I think you'll probably find far more useful than what I can give you at this stage. So I'll link that in in the description for you to look at as well. Now, after the Y position, of course, we have an X position. And again, that's nine bits just here. That's pretty straightforward. So that's what we're going to be working with. Now, as I say, these addresses are all relating to individual tiles and sprites and what have you. So depending on our sprite number, which we have a potential for 380 in total, these addresses will change. So when it comes to our shrink and our Y pos and our X pos, they just go up incrementally here, very straightforward. When it comes to the tiles, because there are a total of 32 tiles with two bytes each, then we are effectively adding 64 to our address for each tile number. Now, that's all a bit confusing, isn't it? Well, I apologize for that. What we do have, though, is we have a function just here called set sprite. Now, we're going to use this to do a basic 16 by 16 sprite. You can see just here. We specify a hardware sprite number. So here we're using hardware sprite zero. And then we're setting an X position, a Y position, a pattern number relating to our ROM. Now, because we've got that Neo Geo ROM, we don't start with pattern zero. We start with pattern hexadecimal 2000. If our ROMs were configured differently in that hash file, maybe we'd use a different number, but that's what this tutorial needs. And then we've got a palette. We're using palette one in both cases. So we're showing two sprites here. We're using hardware sprite zero, and then we're using hardware sprite 10. Now, if we used hardware sprite zero in both of these executions, what we would effectively get is just a single sprite on screen. And I will just show you that if I just move this just temporarily, I'll just move this one just temporarily. And we will move this all the way down to the bottom here after the test code for the Eureka character. And we'll change this to hardware sprite one and we'll see what happens. Now, that's gone quite odd actually. Um, so what's happened here is um, 
we've now replaced sprite 1 with the second crosshair here and because the Eureta character, the big Eureta character here it was chained to that the, the original left hand side of the character that's now been replaced by the crosshair and the chained sprite has been tagged onto the side but because the sprite it's now chained onto is just 16 tall almost all of the characters disappeared so um, that, that's quite surprising <laughs> I kind of didn't predict that would happen, but I do understand why it happened. So we'll just um, undo all of that mess there, and we'll just run that again to remind ourselves what it should look like. So that's what it's supposed to look like, and so effectively this here is hardware sprite 1, and then this side here, the right-hand side of the character, is hardware sprite 2. So that's why that happened, that's why this corner here the top part of hardware sprite 2 got tagged on to this sprite here when we changed the hardware sprite numbers. Anyway, let's have a look at the code that does the job. So this is the kind of template for what we're being passed. The first thing we want to do is we want to change the default sprite settings at hexadecimal 8000 plus the sprite number. So we're loading our hardware sprite number into D7 and we're adding hexadecimal 8000. This will select the basic sprite information. Now, to, to write something to VRAM, we write the address we want to change to 3C quadruple zero, and then the new value to 3C triple zero two. Now, this basic example just sets the scale to full size every time, and that's F for the horizontal scale and FF for the vertical scale. So we're just using a fixed value there. If you want a more advanced one that can scale the sprites, then go ahead. We're going to have a look at that chained one later, but we're not using this function for that. And then we're setting the Y position here. So the Y position is a hexadecimal 200 further along from the, the shrink. So 8,800, 8,001 to 8,201. So that's what, how we're calculating the next position here. And then we are shifting the Y position across to the left by 7 bits. And that's because we need it to be in this position here. Because if you remember, the chain is just here and then the scale, the, the height in sprites is just here. Now we are oring in a 1 here to set the sprite to 1 height and then we are writing the resulting value again to the VRAM. Moving along to the X position and then again rotating to the left by 7 here to put the X position into this location, writing to VRAM. Okay, so we've now set the attributes that are common to all of the tiles of the sprite. Now we want to set a single tile for this sprite. So we need to now move our memory address to effectively hexadecimal 0 plus the sprite number times 64 hexadecimal 40. And so we do that by doing a rotate of the sprite number by 6 to the left. And this will effectively multiply by 64. And that's now our address of the tile number. So we write that and then we write D3, which is the pattern number that we want to show to that address by writing to 302. We've now set the tile number. The last thing we want to do is set the palette. So what we're doing here is we are just again adding one because the palette, if you remember, is immediately consecutive to the actual tile number. So hexadecimal 0040 and hexadecimal 0041, for example. So that's what we're doing there. We're rotating it to the left because it takes the top byte. We're writing that to VRAM and we're finally done. So, not too bad. I bet you're thinking, yeah, we're, 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 on, we're on board with this, we can understand this. Well, brace yourself because we've got that more complex sprite. So we're going to draw that Yorita character now, the chibi alien character you can see just here. And it's, um, as I say, it's four tiles tall, two sprites wide, and it's chained in the middle. So we're going to have to deal with that. So, okay, let's move it out of the way there for now and let's actually discuss what that's going to take. So, we're not using any clever functions to do the work for us, we're going full manual here. So we are defining our sprite as full sized here, and we're writing that to sprite address 1 here. So we're setting the Y position here, we're setting it to hexadecimal F4, because the Y position is from the bottom of the screen, and we're setting the height as 4 tiles, because it's 64 and each tile is 16. Now we're setting the X position, so we're just setting the X position as 28 here. Now you'll notice the chain bit is zero in this case. There's no chain bit being set. That doesn't happen on the first sprite, it happens on the second one. The, the chain bit doesn't say the next sprite attaches to me. The chain bit says I attach to the last sprite and it's gotta be consecutive sprites. 
You can't you can't chain hardware sprite zero to hardware sprite four. It doesn't work like that. You, you could move them around in software, but you can't hardware chain them. Now we've got our sprite set up. So we need to set up four tiles for that sprite, and you can see them just here. So we're using tiles number 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004 here. And this was all exported by the Acu Sprite Editor. Because if you look, this is the second sprite, and it automatically broke it down into 16 pixel chunks here when it created the ROM file. So that's done the work for us. So all we're doing here is we are effectively writing to hexadecimal 40 because that's the address of the tiles for sprite 1 and then 40 plus 2, 40 plus 4, 40 plus 6 because as, a, as I've said before each time the first byte is the tile number the second byte is the palette and the other options so we're setting it all to palette 1 and we're setting those tile numbers now that's done the first strip I'll just prove that to you if I do a if I add an imp jump to in loop and run this just here it's been chopped in half so we've only got half our alien character here so how can we so this next part of the code is doing the second chained part so we're going to set our scale here so we're using hardware sprite 2 this time and this time we're doing something different we're setting the horizontal scale to F but we're not setting the vertical scale that's because the vertical scale is adopted from the previous sprite as is the Y position and the X position so you notice we're not setting them here and in fact we're not even setting the height of the sprite all we're doing is we're setting this 4 here which is enabling the chain bit just here so when we enable that chain bit everything except the horizontal scale is adopted from the last sprite I can prove the horizontal scale is, a, is independent for the second sprite because if I change it to half the right hand side of our character is kind of squashed there so uh, you could you could have some fun with that I think you could you could do some quite nice effects with that kind of as a trick so that's how the chaining works and how the scaling option then applies to that scaled sprite and so then we've got the rest of this which is again just setting the sprite five six seven and eight tiles to the second half of that character and then below that we've got a second version where we're setting the scale to effectively half scale so instead of triple f we're now using eight eight zero and again with the second part we're using half the scale which is exactly what we just did so this is just another hardware sprite using different settings and of course this allows us to scale our sprite down and gives us this chibi chibi Eureka character just here so there we go now as I said before you know that's probably you're probably thinking that's pretty complicated unfortunately it is but because we have no tile layer if you're going to have tiled backgrounds for your games if your games aren't just going to be asteroid type games you know you want a platformer you want a racing game something like that you're going to you're going to want stuff that you can't do with just the fixed layer and just with a few individual sprites so you're probably going to want to create something like a tile map by chaining lots and lots of sprites together and moving those sprites in tandem as a sort of scrolling layer and that's what you're going to have to do basically you're going to have to chain them together like that now we are going to come back to hardware sprites again on the Neo Geo because I've got some simple code that does affect a basic tile map and we're going to look at that and hopefully that will at least give you some idea of how to get along with it but anyway I hope you found this interesting it's taken a lot of work for me to get my head around it so if it's any use to you then great uh, please go ahead download AcuSprite Editor with its source code um, download the source code for today's lesson maybe you can get some use out of it maybe you can have some fun with it thanks for watching today anyway and goodbye